Welcome everyone and thank you for joining me as we talk about reaching students learning modalities through looking and listening about art. I'm Patricia Riley and I teach art history for the Division of General Education Department here at Ashford University and for another college. My experience spans over 16 years as an educator in online environments. Additionally, I have worked most recently as an instructional designer and an educational technologist, primarily in K-12 settings. It is from those experiences and a visit to the National Gallery of Art in London that I found inspiration for this presentation. Finally, through Ashford University's adoption of Civitas IFF towards improvement of student engagement, I am continuing to employ some of the templates provided to encourage my students to discover how best they learn and look to add some audio adaptations. In this presentation, we will learn about auditory learners and how we can support them. Examining rich content of external sources, we will begin to see that it is not always necessary to create content but rather import into our already developed content. Creating audio files for our students is a relatively easy process, and we will explore what platforms are available for use. Finally, we will discuss how to curate these resources for future use. Who is an auditory learner? The VAP learning style model informs us that our adult students can be placed into three categories, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Simply put, auditory learners learn through listening. Written information has little meaning until it is heard. Characteristics of an auditory learner includes that they like to talk, they are easily distracted by sounds, remember names, they are extroverts and prefer lectures and discussions. E-learning makes it difficult to discern who among our students fall into this group. Research shows, though, that 30% of our adult population are auditory learners, and surprisingly, this group of learners retains 75% of what they hear. Adult learners can be a challenge to instructors in the online environment. Oftentimes, they are not aware of how best they learn. As educators and content creators, we naturally gravitate to the numerous videos available in our disciplines. However, the statistics I have previously cited prove that there are learners that we are leaving behind. I feel the strength of online learning is that it provides equity and the opportunity for everyone to take part in the academic process. As an educator, I feel it is important to explore all the tools available to me to address all of my students' learning styles. The importance of meeting the audio learning style for our adult learners is to provide every avenue for them to acquire and apply knowledge. In assisting them to seek learning experiences and ultimately enjoy the education process, we will not only benefit from their short-term goals of academic success, but we will also help them as they apply their degrees in their future pursuits. Ultimately, becoming effective communicators of how they best learn will help inform those they interact with to not only appreciate, but also understand the differences in learning and communicating. With this in mind, we need to operate under the assumption that our students may not be aware of what type of learners they are. They need to be provided guidance so that they can be informed on what learning modality they favor. In our efforts to help our students understand how best they learn, we need to employ enhanced learning strategies. What do I mean by this? Learning strategies are not about what they learn, but how they learn. In other words, moving them towards understanding how they process information. 
the content we develop, and teaching them to learn. This is of great importance in the e-learning space because we need to find innovative and creative ways to help our students reach the metacognitive state. This is where my day job as an instructional designer and trainer informs my thinking. Designing from a metacognitive approach in e-learning is to encourage our students to take control of their learning, become self-aware of how they learn, and problem solve how this best works for them. This works on the premise of offering choice and giving them control of their learning. All the while, this does make an assumption that our learners are intrinsically motivated, which is difficult to determine virtually. Providing tools can drive them to be active participants in a space where we often find passive participants. Auditory learning examples become part of this choice, and if our students are introduced to them in a meaningful manner, it will empower them towards control of their learning. The Joint Information Systems Committee, JISC, a UK not-for-profit organization working on digital innovation and research, has compiled evidence of significant learner benefits from technology. Demonstrating that leveraging the tools available in what I am going to preview shortly, our students' phones, supports students' views of desiring to be more flexible in their learning, looking to social media, new technologies, and practicing assessment tasks all from their own devices. Returning to the impetus for this presentation, during my visit to the National Gallery London, I was impressed with their extensive use of audios for every artwork in their collection. Additionally, the ability to tailor the tour to one's interests or areas of study, and I wanted to replicate that experience for my students. To do that, I turned to the National Gallery of Art in Washington, D.C., where I presently work and live. Their app, Your Art, while certainly not as extensive as what, what I encountered in London, is not only free, but it also provides an expert and scholarly audio commentary, along with the image and proper attribution of the artwork. I quickly realized there was no need for me to reinvent the wheel but rather wanted to encourage the use of the Your Art app at relevant points in the course assignments. Because I wanted to work on a metacognitive approach, I directed my students to the app, but did not assign or recommend specific works. Embedded in the Art Appreciation course are journals and discussion opportunities on self-selected artworks related to the art movement and stylistic regional differences that we are examining. Your Art app is a perfect fit for these student learning activities. Implementation of this approach is still in its beginning phases, but the students who have been willing to try have found it beneficial. To date, I don't feel any of those who have utilized the Your Art audios have been auditory learners. Having said that, they have commented that they have appreciated the thoughtful approach of listening and looking at a still image. This certainly was a side benefit that did not originally come to mind, but it does make sense. I have always worried that we turn to video too quickly in the field of art, giving motion to what is supposed to be appreciated as a still image. Encouraging thoughtful deliberation on a piece, which translates for me as contemplating an artwork for a sustained period of time, is distracting and difficult in a video format. Here is an example of a Your Art app selection. This 500-year-old wood panel, known as Death and the Miser, is one of only a handful of paintings by Hieronymus Bosch in the United States. Drawing on a tradition known as Ars Moriendi, or the art of dying, it depicts the dramatic last moments of a miser who has one last chance to save himself from hell. Curator John Hand. As you can see, uh, the miser is in bed, and death is coming through the door at the left, and our miser has to make a decision, whether to look up 
recognize the crucifix in the upper left-hand window. The angel is imploring him to receive salvation, renounce sin. And on the other hand, there's a wonderful little demon who has popped through the bed curtain and is handing the miser a sack, and we can assume that there's lots of money in that sack. And so the miser has to make a choice. The miser does not look up or down. He is transfixed by the figure of death. Uh, there are, however, other indications as to how this scene will turn out. Looking at the foot of the bed, you can see that there's a figure dressed in green. And what he's doing with one hand is to put money into a chest where there's a little rat-faced demon. And on the other hand, he is fingering a rosary. And he, what he's trying to do is to serve God and mammon at the same time. Available audio resources are plentiful. Keeping in mind that this is not a requirement for our students, my suggestions are going to be ones that are free and in varied formats. The audio materials need to be easily accessed on a variety of devices. In order to ensure that our students take charge of their auditory learning style, we need to ensure that there are no obstacles. Research not only on content, but feasibility of use is necessary. My resources and recommendations primarily derive from the humanities perspective, but that is not to indicate that there is nothing available in other disciplines. Podcasts are certainly a source that I have yet to consider because of the nature of the scope and learning activities of the course I teach. With that said, it may be perfect choice for instructors to utilize. Resources include Open Learn. Open Learn University is quickly becoming one of my favorite sources, not only for audio, but also for personal growth. The topics range in disciplines from the arts and humanities, sciences, business, and technology. The organization of the site is done extremely well, and there are numerous audio possibilities. Featured content allows you to easily view whether or not audio content is available, along with the time length. While the content is not downloadable, the links can be shared readily with your students. Another area of OpenLearn that I think is invaluable are the Open University Radio programs organized by genres. Introducing our students to the OpenLearn University provides them with a strategy to take charge of their learning while utilizing their strength as auditory learners. MIT OpenCourseWare. This is another outstanding academic resource. While the lectures include a look inside the classroom, when utilized by the auditory learner, I would encourage them to listen to rather than look at a generic lecture setting. What is advantageous about the MIT lectures is that they are downloadable. There are also a wide variety of courses to choose from with the lectures broken down into usable segments. Resources for 25 top online colleges that can be adapted for auditory learners includes links for most of the institutions. This provides a solid place to start in looking for auditory content. Please take the time to explore these resources by selecting the hyperlink titles. Podcasts are another avenue to explore with the auditory learner. Chances are they are already engaged with the medium. Numerous academic institutions engage in the creation of podcasts. They include Carnegie Mellon University, Dartmouth College Center for Digital Strategies, Radio Tuck, and the following I think are worth familiarizing yourself with. Emory Carlos Conversations. It's a series of podcasts that use works of art in the Carlos Collection to spark conversations between distinguished members of Emory's faculty. They are only downloadable with iTunes. The University of Oxford. The University of Oxford has a wide variety of podcasts that include the following academic divisions, humanities, physical and life sciences, social sciences, mathematics, medical science, and more. I have linked one of their disability lectures for you to access 
and sample. TED Talks Daily Podcasts, a popular format that looks at a wide variety of topics from leading experts. They are downloadable on all podcast formats. It's an enormous pleasure for us in this inaugural disability lecture here at Oxford University to welcome back Hilary Lister to be our first speaker. Thank you. Vice Chancellor, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for inviting me to be the inaugural speaker um, of this new series of lectures. It's, uh, it's a huge honour and a privilege to speak to you all tonight. I knew at the age of three that I wanted to be a biochemist. We kept chickens and I was desperate to understand how they worked. It was probably just as well that my mother was a chemist because I think I would probably have driven anybody else even more up the wall than I achieved. <laughs> I was born able-bodied, and I usually say I am the third of four boys. I was generally into any sport that involved two things, a ball and physical contact. So rugby, hockey, that sort of thing. Creating one's own content of rich audio is an excellent option. It allows the students to not only receive information in their learning preference modality, but also personalizes the instruction. This is done through hearing your voice, as we often are just the images we are attached to in our profiles with Canvas. There are numerous apps and platforms available for recording. I want to concentrate on just a few because I feel as a seasoned educator, I want to come up with the most efficient way to do the recordings. What you have to consider as you select a recording platform to use is the file types they generate. The two most common audio file types that should be used are WAV, WAV, or MP3s. Audacity is my own personal preference for audio recording, and it is what I used for this presentation. It is easy to use and a free online platform. It allows for recording, editing clips, and adjusting sound levels with ease and efficiency. Files can be exported as a WAV or an MP3. This open source software works on both Macs and PCs. Understanding that we all use the most readily available recording device, our phones, there are numerous apps to select from to be successful. These are two that I've had success with. Audio Recorder by Sony Mobile Communications. It is a simple, straightforward app for your smartphone or tablet. You can record, pause, edit, and export in a WAV format. Voice Recorder Free or its enhanced versions are minimally priced and work well for smartphones. They are easily used and can edit without much difficulty. Exports can be done in the WAV file format as well. For the iPhone, Voice Recorder and Audio Editor has a vintage look that provides the ability to edit and upload to cloud services. Recorder Plus provides a variety of export formats along with the ability to upload to cloud services of your choice. Curating files and content is an initiative that not only saves your work in a common place, but also presents the audio files to your students in a meaningful way. Organization can be done in a relatively simple manner via Google Drive or other cloud-based file management systems. I challenge you to try one of the numerous digital curation tools available. One I have commonly used in my various educational roles is Pinterest, 
it is easily understood and known by the majority of our students. Another one to consider is Evernote. It allows you to capture everything from web links to files and self-created content. All is shareable, and once again, it is a platform that many are already knowledgeable of. The last one I am going to mention is Trello. This is a great tool, as Trello allows you to organize and manage your projects in an efficient way. It lets you create boards to organize anything you are working on, customize workflows for each different project, and checklists of to-dos on cards. I have provided a link to the one I have created for this presentation. All of the above mentioned tools I have used in my varied roles over the past five years. Linking our students to our digital curation tools in the end makes our lives easier so that we do not have to recreate the wheel every time we want to use them. Additionally, we are modeling best practices for our students on how to organize information. Before I wrap up this presentation, I would like to discuss the possibility and hopefully effectiveness of moving Civitas towards an audio approach. Ms. Bertolino's email update of October 3rd on Civitas and faculty engagement clearly illustrates the gains that are being made. And earlier in the presentation, I mentioned how audio recordings can personalize our approach to what can be a sterile online experience. With these factors in mind, my next steps are to gradually use the Civitas IFF Intervention Library, beginning with acknowledging work that demonstrates earnestness and examples that move the class forward by example. Additionally, I will test the waters by reaching to students who have not engaged. My hope is that the personal touch of the audio comment will help my students realize that I am sincere in my approach and encourage developing a dialogue, which doesn't always happen. This may inspire motivation in what is typically not an intrinsically motivated student. Drawbacks to this approach is that the Canvas platform is clunky in the use of audio. I intend to use the written templates in my communication along with an audio file that is more familiar in tone and approach. Realizing this does require double the effort if it proves successful, I will further explore the use of chat and or the collaboration feature of Canvas. Please don't hesitate to reach out to me to learn how these efforts progress. Informing my conclusion, I continue to espouse the same perspective as I had done with last year's presentation, which is, what constantly drives me is my dedication and philosophy that online learning makes access to education equitable. I feel this is incumbent upon me to providing access to tools in a manner that will not only benefit my students, but also will have an impact on their future academic endeavors. Additionally, I bring to this my background as an instructional designer and educational technologist where I am always looking for ways to reach my learners and users of digital tools. In my day job, I have the ability of surveying the expectations of the user groups and understand their needed outcomes. Whereas in education, we define the desired outcomes and at times overlook how our students learn. If a student does not follow the mold that we have developed in our courses, then they struggle through with little to help to drive them to the proper tools for their learning preferences. My hope is that this presentation has helped nudge you in the direction of providing our students avenues to pursue if they are auditory learners and help them to become more successful in our classes. Thank you, and please don't hesitate to contact me if you have any questions.